Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Melissa Armo with the Sock Swoosh, and I'm here reviewing the market. This is live. I'm not trading today. I pretty much had decided I wasn't trading like about 15, 20 minutes ago whenever I rated my gaps and didn't see anything that I wanted to trade today. Did it have anything to do with the market, which made me not want to trade today? No, no, because I didn't like any gaps, but I will tell you that then when I saw what was going on with the market and I guess someone said the futures were halted. I don't know. I was sitting here watching the charts, and I was like, whoa, this is, the market's moving on my thing. But in any event, I knew there was panic all over the world on television today and everything, everybody talking about the market, even my mother. When you get a text from your mother who does not trade the stock market about the market and it wakes you up in the morning, then, then you know that you have regular people panicking. Because for my mother to text me and wake me up about the market is highly unusual. <laughs> So when I got a text from my mom today, <laughs> I knew that something was up. But then I got up and I saw that the market had gapped down. But I will tell you that the first thing I thought when I saw it, and first of all, I did rate the market gaps today. I did. I probably could have rated them the last two days, but I really didn't feel any need to do that. But I did rate them today. And guess what? They did not rate good enough to short. And they're not working out as a short. And I would have still shorted today if I had a good golden gap. I did not. Nothing rated over 20 points. One thing was right on the cusp at 17, and it just wasn't good enough to do. But the market is now flipping. Flipped around over the high, and I think there's something to be learned from this, which is what? You cannot trade in fear. I saw the panic in everyone today then on the news and what everyone was saying. It's like I can hear it in their voice, and I feel like that I'm the only rational person on the planet. And the funny thing is, I like to make money on selling action, which really is panic. So I love to make money on that selling action, which is panic. But I can tell the difference between real panic and not real panic. Although I will tell you that this warranted me rating the gaps this morning because it is bearish. In the short term, short term meaning intraday, meaning you could have shorted the market on Thursday. You could have shorted the market on Friday. You cannot short the market today and make any money. Look at that tail. Uh, let me just look at this. But you you um, could have shorted the market on Thursday and Friday. I didn't do it. But anyways, we talked about this before about short term and uh, long term as far as patterns, um, knowing knowing really what panic looks like. But the, let's just be honest here. The market opened today and swooshed, and it has now gone over the high, and that's a fact. I do not think we swooshed in the spy. Let me just see. But this is a swoosh, and we are way over the high now. <clears throat> yeah, the the spy swoosh too. Well, I I I don't I don't think I've ever seen the market swoosh. This. I swooshed this morning and the Qs swooshed this morning and they're bouncing right now over the high. This is so, this is, I love this stuff. This is, this is, this, this, okay, if this holds here the way that this looks, here, let's just look at the SPY, will probably be the low for a long time. And I know you're like, whatever, Melissa, because I've been talking about the market making new highs. We're going we're gonna to go over that because I had the levels from the swing trade letter, but I'm just telling you, the size of the length of the tail, the swoosh down, the bounce over the high now, the configuration of this situation here, the way that this did all of this, okay? I mean, we have not closed yet today, but I will tell you that the close, oh my goodness, I'm just seeing this here. I will tell you that the close of today will be significant how the market actually closes today. It's, we have, I mean... There's six hours left in the day, but. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, when I got up in the morning and I looked at the market, I immediately thought, let me just rate the gap. You know, it's one of these things where making decisions based on fear doesn't do you any good. I didn't want to get crazy then in my head thinking, oh my gosh, what I saw the market would do wasn't going to work out, which is that it would make a new high. I didn't want to get crazy in my head thinking, oh my gosh, we're all of a sudden in a downtrend now and then wanting to short everything on the planet, which I'm sure a lot of traders wanted to do this morning or today and even yesterday, the day before. Like, you've got to keep your head level, you, especially when you trade. If you do anything with money at all and really trading, it's very important. And I, 
I mean, I I have a huge personality, but in reference to trading, and I get excited when I trade, don't get me wrong, I'm passionate about the market, but I really do look at the right information when I'm making decisions and don't jump the gun on things like saying, oh my gosh, it's short everything in the world, oh my gosh, the market's falling off the planet, or getting upset thinking that it's not going higher. I just have to look at it, and you just look at it and say, okay, let's figure out what to do here. Something, nothing, anything. Today there wasn't anything to do that was a good gap. I can't wait to see how we close today. Because I tell you, for the market to open and swoosh, if the close today of the size of the green length of the body of the bar, which I don't know what it'll be, if it is massively big after the market swooshed down, that just confirms the fact the market's higher. And no one probably believes me now. And I don't even care. I wouldn't even be surprised today if we close above 102.50. I wouldn't even, dream target, I should have just called the market long, but that would have been crazy to do because it opened and swooshed. I wouldn't even, I, the dream target long in the market today, which I did not make an intraday call, is 105. 200 in the SPY. And don't think we can't get there because the market is still in an uptrend. The market is still in an uptrend. And I know it looked bearish because intraday we fell on Thursday, we fell on Friday, and then we seem to collapse into ourselves today. This is not the same thing, though, as... The one that I saw, what was the day? Oh, it was the gold stock. Oh my gosh, what was it? I can't even think of it. GLD. GLD. It was GLD. This was like two and a half years ago, one and a half years ago when I looked at this. Here, it's not the same thing. Remember this. Here. I know it looks similar. But this is why you have to have a rating system because not everything looks the same, even though you're like, well, it's doing this and a gap down here and then it did. No, it's the configuration of everything combined together. It's not just one thing or two things or three things. It's everything. Why do you think I look at 26 things? And if I could ever look at 100 things, I would or 1,000. See, not the same thing. Remember here, after this, those of you that were here, and some of you were, gosh, this is the beginning of 2013. Yeah, it was two years ago. Crazy. Two and a half years ago. Have I been teaching that long? <laughs> Looks like yesterday I started the business. Anyways, remember, this happened. It was a short, and it was a gap down. And then we got up in the morning. This was, this was Friday. On Monday, I looked at that, and I said, oh, my Atlanta. This chart will never be the same again. It, 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 and I said that two and a half years ago. This is not this even though that was a second gap down that is not this see the difference it's nowhere near that but that's the only, like when i saw this today it reminded me of the gld gap you've seen it because of the fact that that had that gap and then fell and had a big gap down and collapsed into itself but then but it's not the same thing but anyways, it made me think about that. That was two and a half years ago. And this index has never been the same since then. And that was a great call to even see that. It's still not the same. Even today. Jaguar Plus says, I believe you despite the bearish gaps, you're holding your conviction. Mr. Vick says the market is just doing a much needed correction. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want. You can say the reason. You can watch TV all day long. We can, we can put it on right now. We can just listen to it and sit here and look at ourselves. But the reality is, you could say whatever the reason is, it needed a correction, it needed this, it needed that, you know, China, whatever, whatever you want to say. It's sunny in Tennessee, I don't know. Whatever you feel like saying, you could say. But the reality is, it all that matters is the price action. That's how you know what to do. When I got up in the morning, I rated the market gaps because I saw it. And I said, let me just rate it. And over the weekend, I was going to actually do that. I was going to actually do it over the weekend, and then I didn't have time, and I did other videos instead. But then when I saw the market gap and down, I say I said, all right, three days in a row, let me rate the gap. The QQQs and the SPY rated 16. Not good enough. Not good enough, and as far as I'm concerned, not even on the cusp. Although I will tell you, you could have scalped the market today, but you would have been playing the swoosh. The stop would have been big. You wouldn't have had any risk to reward, and it would have been aggressive because as soon as you saw it was swooshing, you would have had to quick it out. But what is the rule? What do we know? What did I teach you about swooshes? Right in the room, right now, I'm texting you. Who's awake? I know we're not trading. There's nothing to trade in. No one should be in anything today. If anything, you're long the market, and I didn't call it because it would be crazy to do that on a day when everyone in the world thinks we're falling off a planet, which we're not. 
But anyways, what? Tell me something about swooshes. What did I teach you? Am I talking to myself? I didn't even have a lot of caffeine today. I'm so hyped up from just everyone texting me and emailing me and everything is just the market. I did rate the market as a short, but it didn't rate good enough. But I rate it as a short, but I'm telling the market open and swooshed. And what is happening right now at 947, 17 minutes into the open, what is happening with the swooshes? Mr. Vic doesn't know. He signed up for the class, hasn't taken it yet. That's true. Exactly, Trader Gal. Exactly. In fact, let's just really, 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 really get down to the nitty gritty. <clears throat> also what do I teach you about this what do I teach you about this what have I taught you about this look at that look at that this is you know that's the swoosh basically can't take anything for granted. Why? Because it's the market. It's alive. And it's so freaking awesome. Did I expect the market to gap down this morning, open and swoosh and drop $10 into itself? What I've been calling the market higher to have a, a, have a new brand new all time high and a bullish move at some point of the timing in which I couldn't predict it? Well, did I think that this would happen like this today? No, but you know what? It's the market. It's alive. And guess what? My prediction may still play out to be true. Why? Because this is not what I would call a correction. A correction is a change in trend to me. This is something very unexpected. Okay. But if this holds here in the bounce, which we don't know yet, way too soon to tell because of the day of the transition of the day of how things are happening. But I will tell you, if this holds, this could end up being the low in the market for a very, very long time. Because to come in like this, in a bullish market, and still have it be in the uptrend, is something completely unexpected. Completely unexpected. But I will tell you that the people in charge of the world, if they want to support the market, and hold the market up will buy the market here today and buy a lot that's how this bounce just happened now that reversed the market let's just figure it out exactly how much it was 98.81 14 dollars I don't, I don't know how this is going to play out i'm just telling you that this is why you don't trade against power money we'll see if they step in here they've stepped in here now so far today i don't know if they're going to hold it up and this is where you have people against each other. This is what's so exciting. This is what makes a market. Don't you get it? You have the people then that want to short the market, that want it to collapse, that want to sell out of the longs, that do it. But then you have the people of the power money people. Now you also have power money people that are actually want the market to collapse and want to start shorting. And you know what? May have shorted overnight from Friday or even this morning into the free market because I'm going to tell you that when I looked at this this morning, I was like, uh, uh, uh. And then this actually, I mean, right at 9 o'clock, it went like that. I mean, literally, like literally, this actually, which is what I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not, we're not trading today. I mean, number one, the fact that I said the market didn't have any good gaps today, but number two, like literally, literally, no, this was 928, two minutes before the open. Listen, this started right before the open too. Crazy. Two minutes before the open and went shazam. And look what it did. So, you know, this could have, they could, they could have actually halted this market too, because this is like not normal. In fact, let's go and look and see if that was really, really, and it's not normal for the market to swoosh. And I, I don't know if I've ever seen it. I can't, I don't even know if I've ever seen the market bearishly swoosh. I think I've seen a bullish swoosh, but I don't, I, I can't, I don't even remember. I don't think I've ever seen the market do a bearish swoosh in my lifetime, but I've only been trading for seven years. Let me just look at the day of the crash thing. JMEI is a crazy spread. It had a crazy spread like 
when we did it whenever that day was originally last week. When was that big crashy thing? It was 2011, I think. Was it 2004? Yeah. 10. Oh, the years are running together. Help me. When was it? I'm trying to find it. There. 2010. There. Except for the weird thing. I mean, this happened in the day. No, this was 2010. This is the day I'm talking about. Whatever the fat finger person, they never figured out. Even this actually looked. 4832 is the high, low is 4155. That isn't even as big of a move as we just had now. And they called this the crash. The move we just had this morning in the first five minutes of the day, the swoosh down and the bounce back over, it was bigger than this thing. Look at that. Mm, let me just look at something here. So again, I never expected that we do this today. I never expected that we do this today. So when I got up in the morning, I looked at the support and I wanted to see for the swing trade letter if the support had been broken. At the time that I looked at it in the pre-market in the morning, the cues had not broken it. Now it did into the open in the swoosh, but it now has bounced back above it. The SPY one it was not broken though at all, which was 181. Lowest level of support for the swing trade, long-term level in the, spot, in the SPY was not broken. The Q's was, SPY has been more bullish than the Q's all along, but the Q's are above over it now, which is why I'm saying that the close today is significant. But I wouldn't be surprised if we aggressively got bought. Whether we aggressively got bought in the follow-through today to the dream target, which I just talked to you about, which could be 105 in the QQQs, even though I'm not calling this intraday. I'm saying that I wouldn't be surprised if something like that would happen because power money will step in if it wants to support it. But there are people that have money in the market that are selling now and not little ringer dinks, or the market wouldn't have gapped down two days. Well, no, let's just count it. Wednesday, Thursday, one day. Thursday, Friday, day two. Friday, Monday, day three. This is the third day of a gap down in the market. And the gap down today of the size of the gap down was, was real. So this is why people are panicking. And you really had people actually selling, selling. You had selling panic action that came in. This gap down today would not have opened. Uh, and forget the swoosh for a minute. We did open at 94.23 and we did close the night before on Friday at 102.40. Man, you know, it's almost eight bucks that we got down. So that was real. And that's why I rated it. And I said, wait a second. Let's just take a whole look at the whole thing and see if everything's broken here. But the fact is the chart is not broken. I don't use the word correction, Mr. Vic, because I actually have a term that I made up called corrective gaps. And a correction to me is when something changes trend, not just comes in for people to have another opportunity to buy or short something if something's in a downtrend. So I don't use those words because I term it for something else, okay? This is not a corrective gap in the QQQs. In other words, the gap down that happened in the market today is not changing the trend of the market, okay? This is totally unexpected. Maybe this is, maybe, listen, 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 listen. I'm so glad I'm taking myself live. Maybe this is what needed to happen. It's, life is so amazing. I love it. Maybe this is what needed to happen. Listen, I'm, is everybody listening to me right now? Is, can everyone hear me? I mean, we're not trading today. We, we really, 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 really are not going to trade today. It is, I'm going to let everybody go in like five minutes. I, I, this, I, if I, I should almost like not even look at the market at all, do whatever today, leave the house, go to the gym, come back at four o'clock and see how we close just to, and, and capture it, capture it live on a video. And so I can scream on my lanta because I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I wouldn't even put it past it that the market would close it at 105 of the dream target bullish. I mean, I literally, I'm not calling this here. That would be insane. I do not call you to buy down gaps. 
And I rated this gap today, and it was a 16. So we didn't short it. But I'm telling you, like, I almost should just turn my chart off, not look at anything, anything at all. And I couldn't put it on the television unless I want to watch, you know, Murder, She Wrote, because everyone will be talking about this today on TV. But I wouldn't even be surprised if we closed today at 105. But I will tell you, though, that I think, and this is so amazing about life, that I am seeing this now. And even as totally unexpected as this is, I this is – probably what needed to happen good call to trade not to trade today well done thank you you're absolutely right the the this is probably what needed to happen like everyone in the world was saying we're lower we're lower we're lower we're gonna fall we're getting heavy we're gonna do this we're gonna do that whatever and I kept looking at the chart and I kept saying no we're we're really higher I mean we're really higher everything's fine and we're really higher and we're higher and we're higher and we're higher I didn't tell you when we get there because I don't know because I can't predict timing but every day we look at the gaps and every day I say it looks like we're fine and every day we're still in an uptrend and every day I look at it and whatever but I think this might have been what needed to happen for the market to really get going over the high and I'm not saying this with 100% conviction but I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't put it past the realm of possibility for this trading day today if we close the way that I think we will which I don't know yet ends up being the low in the market for a long, 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 long time to come. Now, perhaps it was too much to think that we would stay in this positionary range and immediately go over the high and blast off as I predicted, which we still, I still see all that happening. Now, we did this situation today where we gapped down and we're holding we're still in an uptrend. Maybe this is what needed to happen b before the market does that. It is very unusual, though, I'll tell you, and very unexpected to have it happen in this manner. But maybe that is what needed to happen because so many people were worried or bearish or concerned or weren't believing that the market was higher. And I kept saying, it is, it is, it is. So this situation happened and it's happening now but I'm telling you that the people in control are still in control as far as I can see and maybe now this is where that control steps in and says Whoop! and they take control and they take it in a massive way and then we just run and we run like the dickens okay but here's the bugaboo when normal people are in a panic mode, or people that didn't see it the way that I saw it, which I still do, and which it, we're, I can't wait to see how we close today. But anyways, if they've sold out in here, they sold out with profits, and no one said you couldn't. I mean, you could have sold out with profits if you were in the market long, or stocks were long, or whatever. You could have sold out with profits, or you're doing the selling in here. It's very hard for people then to sell out and then to buy back in immediately. But that's the difference between power money and regular money. Right? Power money will not sell out in here but it will buy more already in and they're already in and they and so they didn't sell out and they will buy more but regular people have a problem have a problem meaning what they have a problem selling and then immediately stepping in back in and buying because if they were scared and they sold then they're not going to step right back in with the faith and conviction to buy and people may miss um, a nice rally that could transpire in here. I don't know. Well, it's going to as of right now. I still see it, but I don't know the timing of that. Maybe this is what needed to happen because all of this was stationary and stagnant for so long. I still looked at this bullish. I still look at this bullish here. And I love to trade gaps and I love to trade bearish gaps, but you got to know what you're looking at. And despite the gap down today, it was good enough for me to rate. It really did gap down today. I mean, there was no mistaking the fact that the market gapped down today. 10 points in the SPY and whatever it was in the Qs, it was at $8 in the Qs. It was a real gap down today. You could have rated and looked at the short. But the reality was it did not meet the criteria. So we did not short it. And I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility as unusual and unexpected as this is here for the market to set the low today in the market that could last for a long time is probably too much to expect even though there was so much bullishness in this chart 
for us to immediately run up and continue and make a new high. But because we were sideways pretty much for most of the time of the year, I thought that we had rested enough to do it. But apparently this is what needed to transpire. Whether or not we follow through or not, I guess we're going to have to play out and wait and see. I really think it is going to matter a lot how we close today. And I just can't wait to see how that is. But the fact that the market opened this morning and swooshed. And the swoosh is off. Okay? And I don't ever think I've ever seen a bearish swoosh in the market in all the years I've traded. It was the seven years. We saw it today in a gap down. So it was valid. It's not following through. And on top of that, if we close aggressively higher today, that will even give me more conviction that the market is in fact higher. Because to have a swoosh come in like that, reverse itself in the live day, right after it swooshed and hold and close strong in this market after the panic and the gap downs from the last two days, who do you think is in charge? Listen to what I'm saying. This is very important. I'm going to stop the video. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to let everybody go. Do you understand what I'm saying here? I can't believe, I wouldn't be, I should just turn this off right now and come back at 4 o'clock. I'm telling you, this is insanity. The dream target for the QQQs today is 105, and the dream target for Spy Day is 200. I mean, this is, it could really go there. That's how crazy this is. Look at it. This is, if it goes there, I will scream. I'll take myself screaming live, but I look at it. <laughs> Weezy says she has to go to an appointment. Great call. Have a good day. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm like, whatever. I mean, TFM actually went to some crazy, crazy target on Friday. Who could have expected that? That was, I mean, 19 something. That was insanity. Did anyone even do that or hold it as long as it was? But, you know. What do you mean control not allowing some mini crash? I don't even know what, I don't even like that word crash. That word crash is bothersome to me. You know, a crash is when we get up in the morning and we're, we're, in, we're, we're in what is really actually a correction. Like we just did, like if we had got up today and we, we actually did do a corrective gap in the market, you would have heard it in my voice. You would have heard it in my voice. We'd be shorting the market. The market wouldn't be at 191. The market would be at 170, and we'd be shorting it. We'd be up a million dollars. So, you know, I, trust me, you, you'll know. You'll know because you'll hear it in my voice. Now, you did hear in my voice today, wait a minute, we're not doing anything. They halted the futures, or somebody said they did, and, the, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, we're not trading. But you didn't hear in my voice today, like, anything that would make me feel like doing something with this short. Like you would hear it. You would hear it in my voice. And then, then you know. Until you don't hear that in my voice, there's nothing to worry about. And I'm not denying that the market didn't have two bearish days last week and that the gap down today wasn't bearish. I'm not denying that at all. Again, it has to do with the quality. It has to do with the quality. There's lots of things that are bullish that you shouldn't buy. There's lots of things that are bearish that you shouldn't short. But you want to look for the quality because you got to have the follow through and you got to have the setup and you got to have the place to take the trade and know where it's going for the area for the target. You have to find quality. Was this a bearish gap down today to rate? Yes, it was. I rated it. It was 16 points in the market, but it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. And it's not going anywhere. At least not to the downside. What happened with these other ones? This flip, there's nothing to do today. Nothing. Ah, this, I made such a great decision not to trade today. Okay, trader gal's making a point. Anybody in the market long is worried. That is absolutely 100% true. You are correct. And doesn't want to be caught in the market, including your brother who's in mutual funds. That's why I'm saying here why it's so interesting. Why it's so interesting because there's so many different levels of people in the market. That's why this is so great. Why do you think if people find it challenging to trade and don't know what to do and then the panic comes in and then they're, you have, this is what, this is what's so great about it. Don't you get it? This is what's so great why we can do it. I mean, at the end of the day, this is why it's so amazing that we can do it as well as we can, that I can do it as well as I can. And last week, whatever the one was that fell off a planet after I already got out of it, crap, which one was it? I can't even think. What was the one we did last week and I took it out and I was up good money and I was so happy and singing and dancing and then it fell off a planet.
and then I and then I, I lectured everybody. I said, wait a minute, let's get real here now, people. We can't be greedy. We, we're making money in an industry where most people don't know how to do it. And at the end of the day, this is what makes the market and why people find it challenging because there is so many different levels of money in the market. You've got this person and that person and this person and that person. And one of the videos I did over the weekend, I was listening to them. I was like, I was like a regular person, a medium person, a whatever person. I what I was I was talking about money when I was talking about that. When I was just I was what I was talking about. I was talking about the levels of the financial level. This is crazy. 105 is a dream target long for the Qs today. This is amazing. Ugh. I'm giving myself a round of applause for calling this today so well and knowing that it wasn't going anywhere. But the swoosh confirmed it then. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, there's so many different levels in the market. You got to know who's in charge. The big dog. The big dogs. And the thing is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different dogs. You got small dogs and you got the medium dogs. And you, I mean, you have dogs from baby dogs to older dogs to fat dogs to tall dogs. You've got the Great Dane dogs. I mean, you have so many different kinds of dogs that it's not even funny. How do you know which dog to follow? The power money in the chart, and there is only one. There is only one. There's only one big pop, pop dog. And the only way you know that is by knowing how to read gaps. And that's how I can predict this stuff so well. Because I looked at the gap today. It was a bearish gap down. I said it wasn't a short. There. End of story. But that's what makes the market. That's what makes it challenging because you did have real selling. The market wouldn't have fallen on Thursday and Friday and gap down today if you didn't have selling. Like selling with real money that was in there. And we just discussed it. And that's what Trader Gal is pointing out. It's more than just regular people. I said that earlier. It is more than just regular people. But I'm telling you, it is not who's in control. I keep getting that noise. Can everybody hear me? I don't know. No one's short this 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 market here, are you? All right, I'm gonna stop the video. Have a great day, everyone. This is Melissa Arma with the stockswoosh.com. Here, I'm gonna stay here in the room a minute. I just want to turn the video off because I had that noise. Stay here, everyone, for a minute. Have a great day. If you're interested in more information, email me at Melissa at the